UNSCARE, the United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation, was set up by the UN General Assembly in 1955. For the last 25 years, it has examined in detail the impact to health and the environment of the Chernobyl accident. UNSCARE's principal officer is British scientist Dr. Malcolm Crick. After Chernobyl, the only public health impact that we have seen has been the more than 6,000 thyroid cancers amongst those people who were children at the time of the accident, drinking contaminated milk. Of those uh, 6,000 or more cases, perhaps 15 had died. It's not a very fatal disease, thyroid cancer is caught early and treated properly. Then when we think about other effects, actually there's no really good persuasive evidence of any public health impact uh, due to radiation from the accident other than the thyroid cancers. Most people find that kind of hard to believe, but in fact that's the case. Professor Jerry Thomas from London's Imperial College is a world authority on molecular pathology. She's also a director of the Chernobyl Tissue Bank, an international initiative to collect biological samples from those exposed to radioactive iodine in childhood. Work that has led Dr. Thomas to reassess her views on nuclear energy. Just in case. Um, the health consequences of a nuclear power accident may not be as bad as we first thought. I was anti-nuclear until I started working on Chernobyl. No, no problem at all. The results of the studies um, that we carried out post Chernobyl, which were big international studies, have not been what we might have expected from the outset. Those studies have shown that there is only one thing that we can pin down to being due to radiation, and that's the sharp increase of thyroid cancer in, in those who are very young at exposure to the Chernobyl accident. In the case of Chernobyl, there was a lot of iodine being released and, very important, nobody told the population that this iodine was there and that the milk was contaminated with this iodine. Professor Arbel Gonzalez from Argentina is deputy chairman of the International Commission on Radiological Protection, a body of the world's leading scientists and policymakers, which, since 1928, has set guidelines for governments around the world. Mothers who didn't know that an accident has happened, these mothers were given contaminated milk to their children very heavily contaminated milk. No surprising, the children have a very high dose of radiation in their thyroid, and no surprising, a lot of children, mainly in Belarus, but also in Ukraine and in Russia, got thyroid cancer that can be attributed to Chernobyl. If we think of the emergency workers after Chernobyl, there's 134 people who got acute radiation sickness from the first few days of very high exposures after the accident. And 28 of those people died. They died within the first month or so. Then when we look further on in time, those people have got problems with skin injuries still, and they've got problems with cataracts. Uh, but only about 19 or 20 people have died in the period since the accident to now. And not all of those deaths can be attributed to radiation. In fact, many of them clearly are not due to radiation. So the voice of leading scientific bodies is clear. The only observable public health impact due to radiation after Chernobyl has been the more than 6,000 thyroid cancers, of which only around 15 have proven fatal. As for the emergency workers who received the highest doses, fewer than 50 have died. These numbers, while significant, represent a fraction of the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of victims predicted after the accident. Frequently misunderstood by the public, radiation dose is determined by the type and amount of radiation we are exposed to. It's measured in the International Standard Unit of Millie Sieverts. Professor Thomas on the doses received by residents living around the Chernobyl plant. 
Now, this is the figure that when I saw it, I thought, well, actually, that nicely puts it into perspective. The whole body doses to 6 million residents is about 9 millisieverts, okay? So each person got about 9 millisieverts. And 80% of that lifetime dose was delivered by 2005. Now, 9 millisieverts is about what any of us will get when we go and have a CT scan. Do we sit there and panic about having a CT scan? No, we don't. And we need to make sure that we keep that in mind when we're talking about accidents like this. We expose ourselves to radiation voluntarily. We can't avoid it. We live in a radioactive world. Naturally occurring background radiation is the main exposure to radiation for most people globally. Levels typically range from 1.5 to 3.5 millisieverts per year. However, there are several places in India, Iran and Europe where doses can be more than 50 millisieverts a year. Medical procedures such as x-rays account for most of the remaining 12% of a typical person's annual dose.